Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hashtag Open Ed. I'm Miley from the Hashtag Open team, and tonight I'm joined by my co-host, Sarah, and our guest, Davia, who Sarah is going to introduce in just a minute. But I always like to start by telling you a little bit more about us here at Hashtag Open, the sex-positive dating app for open relationships like polyamory, BDSM, and more. So when you join Hashtag Open, you're going to find a community of open-minded members who are interested in or already exploring ethical non-monogamy. If you're somebody who's looking to chat with your partner, you can create a partnered account to chat, match, and explore with that partner. Or you can create a solo account to do those things on your own. Once you join Hashtag Open, you're going to find that our members represent a diverse range of sexual, gender, and relationship orientations. And we give you the tools to communicate those things right on your profile. You can choose from our extensive list of options or add in your own. If you're looking to match based on some of your wildest desires, try a hashtag search to quickly find other members who are looking to share similar experiences. So whether you are looking for an FWB, an LTR, or if you're just DTF, Hashtag Open has you covered. You can join us for free at hashtagopen.com and we're available for both iOS and Android. And we hope to see you in app happily swiping. All right, Sarah, can you tell us more about Davia and what we're covering tonight? or uncovering, uh, as it were. <laughs> uh, I sharpened my wit. I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Sloan, and I am the Director of Communications for Hashtag Open. And um, I am a veteran sex educator, and I also am a Chicagoan. And those things come in really, really important because I want to introduce you all to Davia Frost. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, She's got a wonderful bio. You can go read it. I'm just going to condense it. Um, so Davia is a powerhouse sex educator. Uh, Davia has been teaching at Exotica. She's working with Desire and Temptation to bring really accessible, friendly, female-empowered uh, sex education to the masses. Um, she's got an amazing vibe and an energy that I know you're all going to love. Uh, she's also a Chicagoan, so yay, third, uh, second city. Um, and I got to know Davia uh, a number of years ago as when I think she was just starting uh, kind of kind of building her her name and building her her reputation as a sex educator and I knew that she was going to be somebody special then um, and I am so delighted to introduce her to you all and tonight she's going to be talking about uh, some building up those oral skills for the fellatios um, <laughs> um, and you know what I, I have to say like um, the thing that cracked me up is Miley and I usually talk about like who you know, like we, we talk about either topics that we want or people that we want, and then we kind of figure out like who, who we want to bring on. And I literally think like it was like three weeks ago and I said, Miley, have we had any classes about penises? And she was like, I don't think we have. And so like I was literally gobsmacked. And so when Davia sent, sent her class list over and there was one about penises on there, we were like, yeah, let's do that one. So, um, so you're you're breaking our penis class cherry tonight. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we will back off and let Davia share some wisdom with y'all. Davia, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you again for having me, and thank you Absolutely. all for coming on and sharing space with us and um, adding to this container we have because it's gonna get. Hopefully it gets juicy. I'm, I think it will. I, I think so. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be juicy. It's definitely going to be pleasurable. And you'll definitely have some tips for this weekend and beyond, even tonight, hopes, you know, right afterwards. So you guys are going to have to bear with me. I am not the most technical person. So I'm going to try to pull up this <laughs> PowerPoint. Just give me one second. You're all good. Technology was not something that we all thought we needed to know this much about last March. <laughs> At all. <laughs> At all. Oh. oh, I need to be allowed to share. <laughs> but yes, you guys, um, this class is not necessarily like the basics, though I will go over and kind of skim through that. I definitely will be bringing up throat gasms, face fucking, throat fucking 
um, playing with the prostate, uncircumcised penises, and how beautiful and enjoyable they can be as well, because I really feel like a lot of the things that I've read and seen have been very hurtful, right, um, for something that is natural, right? That was how the penis came out when they were born. Um, and I have some toys I want to share with you guys and, and a few like techniques as far as positioning to really help you get through some of your gag reflexes and deep throating and you know, things like that. So definitely. And helping you out because you can't sit there with your mouth and jaw open forever. Just, you know, just being honest. <laughs> All right, Tavia, you should be able to present now. Okay, awesome. All right. And boom. There's like so many like um, protection walls, which I'm grateful for. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, geez. So yes, we're gonna go over the advanced techniques. Let me share this or present. Okay, good, and our faces are still shown. I was always iffy about that with other places, but we're gonna go over the anatomy real quickly because sometimes I pass over this and then people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you talking about? So I have my two little props. Uh, well, average, whatever you want to call them, props <laughs> with a nice curve. But we're going to um, go over the anatomy real quickly. And these, I don't have an uncircumcised one here with me, but we're going to make it work. So, of course, we have the scrotal sac, which is a sac of skin that covers the scrotum. We have the, tex the testicles, a.k.a. the balls the glands involved in the production of testosterone and sperm within the body. We have the shaft, which is the main body of the penis. You know, they can be curved, they can be a little bit straighter, they can, you know, cox, phallic, penis, lingams. And oh, mind you guys, I'm even in my typing and what I say, I'm gonna go through all the different names and terms there is for penis. Cock, phallic, lingam. Lingam is a Sanskrit word for cock, phallic, <laughs> dick. You're going to see it. So just be mindful of that. <laughs> then, of course, we have the glands, which is the head or the tip, which is you know, the most sensitive part of the penis. Um, that's really because most of the nerve endings are here. Um, we have the urethral opening, which is where the urine comes out of and the ejaculate leaves the body. We have the coronal ridge, and it's so funny because a few years back, we never would have thought that the word corona would be what it is now. But the coronal ridge is the ridge right around the head of the penis, which joins the head to the shaft of the penis. And then we have the frenulum, which is another really sensitive part of the penis, which is located just on the underside of it. Oh, I see some spelling. And I don't have a butt to show you guys, but the perineum is right underneath the scrotal, the balls, right between that little area, right between the anus and just underneath the balls. So, And it is a really stimulating place that people often um, drive by, yeah, drive by it, uh, and go to either or. And it is the root of the actual penis. So that's literally like the, the true base of the penis, okay? On a uncircumcised penis, there's going to be, you know, foreskin. And the foreskin is just, you know, skin that covers and protects the glands. Inside the foreskin, it is a lot of nice, silky, keeping it moist, um, mucous membranes. Um, and that also allows to keep the glands nice and sensitive too. Um, and I'm not here to shame anybody's anatomy or penis, but once the foreskin is removed, you know, there's a lot of friction that happens with the head of the penis. So I'm, 
you will lose some of your um, nerve endings, right? Because the foreskin has a lot of that as well. But, you know, you can't go back. So what it is, is what it is. <laughs> um, and the frenulum on the uncircumcised penis is you're going to see the skin and inside there's like a place where you can see like it's connected. It's a there's a little texture there. That is the frenulum that's, that is on the, you know, when the foreskin is connected. Um, oh, and just in my notes, the foreskin contains a rich supply of blood vessels as well, and of course, dense concentration of nerve endings. So communication. Though I've told you, you know, certain places that are sensitive on the penis, please communicate with your partner to figure out what it is that they are actually into. Um, no partner is the same. So me starting with one partner and going to another partner, I can't really do the same ticks, uh, tricks and techniques because maybe this person really doesn't like their balls played with, whereas the other person really loves them being tugged and, you know, CBT, I'm in that too. So, you know, tortured a little bit too. But <laughs> really just communicate. <laughs> and I also have a note for my receivers as well please, you know, give the person that is giving you or worshiping you or honoring you with some oral um, honor, I don't know, pleasure, give them feedback as well. You know, I think all sexual interactions should be a learning experience because we are adaptive. We are always, we're sponges, right? So we are wanting, we are wanting to learn and get better at things. And, you know, there's nothing wrong but it also sucks when you think that you're doing something like you're really like I'm killing it like you know I got them wrapped around my finger and they're like uh, you know you could have done this and this and that you know so just please give feedback communicate that is a huge thing in any kind of relationship that you have sexual or not so yeah don't be afraid Oh, and give specific directions, right? We are all um, in charge of our own pleasure, okay? I want you all to remember that. You yourself is in charge of your own pleasure. So if you are wanting something, you have to speak up for it. If you are needing something, you have to speak up for it. And give specific directions so there's not a lot of, well, you told me to go down, but I don't know where down is, you know? So and make it easier, right? Let's have sex easier. I don't want to say not harder because, you know, that's what you're into. That's what you're into. Let's just make it easier. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, you know, some people might like their face caressed, like um, those who are doing the honoring. Like, so you can tell your partner that, like, I really love when you hold my chin up, you know, that really helps me out. Um, hair, that's something for me, because if I don't have a hair tie, like, I need you to hold my hair up, okay? <laughs> Some may want you to dominate them, um, and that can look different. Um, different websites, um, the Pleasure Chest, uh, SheBob, um, Good Vibes, wherever, they usually have a form that allows you to even see kind of what you're into, and I call them sexual menus. Um, which help with the communication. But these are really nice. You can do this without the actual form itself, but it's nice because there's a bank on it. So you can really kind of see what it is that you could be into, maybe not be into, and definitely are not into. But if you are wanting to experiment a little bit more, or you don't really know how to communicate that verbally, that is a great way to go. And it's a nice like kind of game. I don't know. Maybe you can make it a game of things that you might be into. Um, and here's the thing. Maybe there's something that you don't like doing, but you do it anyway because you think your partner likes it, just to find out your partner doesn't like receiving it or when you do it. So then you know you can pull that out because it's wasted time and you guys could be doing something else that you actually like and it's pleasurable. And of course, oral, head, fellatio, whatever you want to call it should be mutually pleasurable, a mutually pleasurable experience. So, yes. So a question I get a lot, especially if I'm on like podcasts or anything is, what makes a good blowjob? First of all, the giver should be into it. Like, I kind of don't like the term blowjob. That's why you'll hear me say honoring, um, worshiping, you know, and you know, if you have 
if worship is not the word you want to use, you don't have to. But the reason why I don't like using the term blowjob is because who wants to do a job, right? When we just want to enjoy pleasure. <laughs> like make it something that sounds sexy, something that makes it sound juicy, something that makes it sound like something you really want to do and then feel that. Because when you're not enjoying it and it's just, you know, something you feel like you have to do, um, that energy is felt. And if, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Okay. I'm not saying you have to, like, I'm not saying come to this class so you can learn how to do it, even though you don't necessarily want to do it. But, you know, don't do anything you don't feel like you have to do is what I'm trying to say. So the warm up. So this is the time to really tease the person that's receiving. Um, usually they're flaccid unless, you know, they this is kind of like a routine thing. Like they know your, your positioning, like you start crawling to them. They're like, oh, I know what time it is. And they're up there <laughs> standing at attention. But if they're not, let's say, you know, this is a flaccid penis. I'm going to use a mask that I don't wear as like, you know, draws or something. You know, let's get. <laughs> so let's say it's flaccid, you know, and you just kind of just want to warm them up to it and they're wearing boxers, briefs, whatever, underwear. And you can really just start teasing them with your hands. I like to wear my claws, you know, as you can tell. So I like to, you know, kind of gently, gently, gently <laughs> stroke and touch and, you know, kind of just bring some blood flow to the surface. Um, I will say, and you won't see it in these slides, but there's other, um, erogenous zones on the body, right? So the inner thighs, the nipples, um, behind the knees, the sacrum or sacrum, however you want to pronounce that, right under the cuffs, right underneath the butt, um, the cheeks, you know, the undercarriage of the cheeks, um, the neck, the ears. These are other places that you can touch as well that are also stimulating and pleasurable too that can also heighten the experience. Um, and you also don't want to go straight to the most sensitive part of the penis, which again, we said is the glands. So you want to kind of do some drive-bys, you know, like maybe you might nuzzle your face and then like go somewhere else. You might kiss a trail down their belly, you know, just to the top of their pubic bone. Um, or you could just verbally say like, babe, like I'm ready to give you my mouth tonight. <laughs> However that is, if you want to customize that for yourself. Um, what did I say here? Oh, use a lube. You know, definitely in the warm up. Lube is your friend. I don't know why we like to run away from lube. I'm looking for my lube here. Um, when it comes, I'm going to be honest with you, when it comes to any like Oral stimulation, I will use water-based lube sometimes with um, a flavor. I always try to make sure it's sugar-free. Um, and you do want to look and pay attention to anything you pick up or buy um, and ask questions. Like that's, you know, when you see those chat boxes or, you know, you're on a site such as open, like ask questions and see where people have experience with it and everything like that. You want to do patch tests, please be safe. Um, don't just, you know, start pouring it all over the bits that are pleasurable and then just to find out you're allergic to it, right? Um, but when it comes to like anything just with the hands, I won't use a water-based lube just because a water-based lube will, it's water, like it's the main ingredient is water. So when you get that tacky feel, it's because the water's starting to evaporate and you got to re-wet and re reapply. And again, I like things easier. I don't like to constantly have to do things, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm gonna go for like an oil. Please check in with your partner and yourself as far as any allergies. I will typically use coconut oil, um, but you can use grapeseed oil, almond oil. Um, there's tons that you can use, it. Just, just not like cooking oil, you know, just, you know, please. Even though you can cook with coconut oil or anything like that, let's stick to, oils that are organic and things like that because you want to make sure whatever you're ingesting you know you're wanting to put on your body as well or reverse what i just said um so if it's just like hand like if i'm just giving them a hand job or a lingam massage 
I will use coconut oil, use my hands, see if I can put this here. And then I'll just slowly start to stroke them just to keep bringing the blood flow and everything to the shaft and the penis and things like that. Eye connection helps with the allure. I am a temptress. I am a seductive person. I, my eyes, you know, I love them. That doesn't mean, you know, you're glaring into their soul. You know, you just want to keep it soft. <laughs> you don't want to just like, you know, that looks kind of creepy, right? So you want to just do soft look and you're just trying to connect with them on a, on a different level. And it, brings a sense of vulnerability because it's like, ooh, they're really, really looking at me. And that allows you to even go deeper into the play because you're really kind of taking off that wall of protection in a way. Don't rush. That's always my key tip. Number one, take your time. Um, you know, give soft kisses, you know, like kisses there. Um, rub it around your lips like you're applying lipstick, you know, just really tease them, taking their scents. I don't know about you, but if I really like the person I'm giving <laughs> some oral pleasure to, I love their scent. So especially when they come out the shower, I'm just like, yes, I just, I just want to please you. I'm like, that's like, let's, let's do this. Um, admire it. Really look at the, what the person, your partner has. Like, I think we, we kind of miss that. We rush so much and we're just like, oh, okay, head down. Or, you know, slide it into entrances and things like that. And it's like, have you really looked at the beauty that is on your partner's body? Like, it's attached to your partner, right? It's beautiful. <laughs> and you can also use your tongue to tease your partner. So those of you who have tongue rings, you kind of, I, I yes, I'm assuming that you kind of already know how to use it, but you can use the tip of your tongue. You can use the flat of your tongue, um, run it down the length of the shaft. You can explore his or their balls and perineum. Um, don't forget to pay attention to their reaction and just a lot, yeah, just take them in inch by inch, whatever it is. And it's, it's a great beginning of the turn on that's getting ready to happen. And, you know, it glistens because it's, you got the lube there, you got, you know, your saliva there, and now you have like a sparkling cock. <laughs> So you also want to experiment. Have fun with these things, right? <laughs> Try out different techniques and take the time to really see if you both like them or not. So this is going back to my sexual menu comment. So let's say you don't have like the actual word bank, but you've seen different things, if, even if it's porn or you saw it on Twitter or, you know, wherever you saw it or you fantasized about it, you can try it out, communicate that with your partner, try it out, take note of it, write down if that's something you enjoy or it really was, mm, you know, maybe we can try it again and see if I like it again or, yeah, no, that wasn't for me. So also keep those notes and having a sex to journal period and, and journals period we buy them all the time i have millions of them and some of them i probably only wrote something on the first page but regardless allocate these journals for something and the great thing about going back to the journal and the sexual menu is that again we are evolving creatures beings um you can see kind of where you guys started especially if you're in a long-term relationship with anybody like oh okay that was cute you know, oh, we we really did some things. And it's really nice to look back at it and, you know, that also sparks that um, fantasy and that memory of great experiences as well. Um, teasing the head or the glands with your open mouth. Like it's literally, you're relaxing your jaw and you're just allowing them to feel the heat that is coming from your mouth. And that can also be very pleasurable. You know, like when somebody kisses, certain parts of you and they kind of blow on it or they, and you're like, ooh, it just, you know, it's down your spine. That's the same thing here. That's kind of the same thing you're wanting to do. 
Um, explore different types of uh, stimulation and sensation. So if your person likes temperature play, like you can get some ice or, you know, maybe a crystal. If you're like, you like those things. Um, I do. I'm a crystal person. Like you have beads, right? And they're made of crystal. You can kind of chill them down and you can put them around the cock and just kind of stroke and play with them. If they like heat or warmth on their cock, you can warm these up a little bit. Don't go crazy. Never put anything in the freezer. I know some people recommend it. I will never recommend that for you. And never put anything in the microwave. Let's stay away from the stove. Um, you can easily just get a bowl of water. You can have one with ice in it or, or just cool water, whatever is comfortable for you. And you can place whatever toy or whatever, anything that you want to cool down. The same thing with warm water. And please patch test, please let them test it out to see if that's what they're into. And don't neglect the balls if they like it, if, because I've had partners who are like, leave them alone, okay? Just please leave them alone. They're too sensitive. It doesn't feel good. But if they are into it, you know, definitely try that out. There are cock rings out there that can really help you with the tugging. Um, I can't think of the company right now, but it's Ox Balls. Is that what it's Yes, there we go. <laughs> they have some great um, cock rings that you can play around with of different materials. Some are metal, some are um, the stretchy material. I can't think of the term right now. Some are, are rubber, some are um, silicone. Again, loop, 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 loop. Okay? Don't ever put it on just like and roll it on dry skin. Um, sometimes the speed and the amount of friction that the person needs in order for them to come can't be achieved with just your mouth, and that is okay. We are so ego-driven. I can be that. I'm going to be transparent because I want to see it. I want to see my work completed. <laughs> but there are partners who cannot come from oral stimulation alone. I'll be honest with you, that is kind of like a... Oh, okay. So you really, you like, you're egging me on. Like, okay, because I'm going to do this. Like, that, that's a game for me. But even if you're not able to, I want us to kind of step away from that ego mind because the whole point is to enjoy the stimulation and the pleasure and the experience. And if you're already thinking of the end result, I mean, you've just missed everything that led up to that. So just a little tip. And also, and I I'll say this again, and towards the end when I'm talking about anal stimulation, I I also have a partner who has had their prostate removed and of course people who don't have prostates and I call it the phantom prostate, but they don't ejaculate if that makes sense. So if they are somebody that had their prostate removed, they still have the sensation of ejaculation, but they don't, nothing actually comes out. Okay. So Again, if you have a partner like that, you're already going to have to remove your ego from that and just, you know, see and watch and enjoy. Just want to make that. <laughs> uncircumcised cocks. So if you ever encountered an uncircumcised cock and this is the first time or this is the first time, ask the owner how they like to be touched. Um, always use saliva or lube honestly especially when it comes to the foreskin and you never want to just roll it back hard or anything like that like take your time take your time <laughs> um and you don't want to you know injure your partner so you definitely want to you can use your fingertips as long as it has a little bit of lube on it and you can gently slide it down if they have an extensive amount of uh, foreskin or the foreskin at least covers the glands completely. Um, some people might, when they grow or get erect, the head might protrude just a little bit outside of the foreskin. And that helps you a lot too, because you don't have to shift the foreskin down too much at all. Um, 
And if the gland massage is too much, so let's say we're like rolling or slowly sliding down or just trying to stimulate them a little bit more too. You can do this with your lips, adding pressure, or you can do this with the, your fingertips. Um, and it might be too much stimulation. You can then go back to the uh, shaft of, the, of their cocks. So use the whole anatomy. Um, same thing when you're sucking, you know, add some pressure with your lips. And I kind I call it like, like, what are those lollipops that you like, you had to like push out and so like, <laughs> I know that sounds a little crazy. And I think it was like, on sex yeah. And push pops. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> so it's kind of like <laughs> the push pop, except you, you know, I mean, you could put your finger up there. We'll talk about that later. But, um, it's it's kind of like that. It's like a nice surprise, right? Um, so yeah, and you do that slowly, right? Because the candy can cut your lips, and you know it can get sloppy and sticky and everywhere. Unless that's something you like. But in the same sense, you want to suck not too hard, unless that or communicate with your partner with that definitely. But slowly glide the foreskin down. And then you can get to the glands and do what you gotta do. Um, you can also tease the cock by slipping your tongue between the foreskin, which is really nice too, because it's like a, a swirl, the tongue swirl. <laughs> um, and that, again, I'm saying that because that's without retracting the foreskin. And like I said, some have more skin than the other, so just act and adjust accordingly. Please be gentle and take it easy. You'll see this a lot. So I keep saying the number one tip. I have a lot of number one tips, but give, though everybody is um, in charge of their own pleasure, I think it's really nice to honor your partner in a sense, like if, especially if you guys have that type of relationship, like it could easily be like, and this could be in a text message, this can be verbally or however you want to do it. Like, babe, I just want to honor you and your cock. Like, that's just what I want to do. And then give your total devotion to it in that time. And there's some techniques that, you know, you both can play and you can play with yourself that I'm going to talk about shortly. But just know that in that time, that's what's happening. And I'm a person that likes to teach divvying up times for different things instead of just piling everything on top because then it can get very, it can be too much. It can be overstimulation, right? So remember that. Just give it that time. That time is when it's oral and then you can move on to something else. And I'm not saying it has to be 10 minutes or anything like that, but just know whatever amount of time that you give it, you give it your full devotion. Techniques are always helpful, but if you don't truly enjoy it and come with the energy that it that you want to enjoy it or, or really a desire to enjoy it, it's going to be lackluster. Like, who wants somebody, like, just touching or kissing on them if they really don't want to? Like, you know, your mind is going to start wandering or it's just like, okay, just stop. It's okay. <laughs> and no amount of tips and tricks will help you if you're not into it, obviously. And... This is very vulnerable, right? We have, we've learned and have had to strip off a lot of um, teachings um, about oral pleasure or pleasure period, right? Because a lot of us weren't even taught pleasure, you know, growing up. And I think it's changing now. I'm hoping, you know, especially somebody as myself who's, you know, gone into different colleges and universities and, and really are trying to teach pleasure-based sex education, um, a lot of people don't have that. So just be gentle. Um, and especially if they come from a very religious background. J I've had a partner who literally would just take a shower every time. And at first, I my, again, my ego was like, Did, am I disgusting or anything? But it had nothing to do with me. So it was just something they were going out, you know, dealing with. I get this question all the time, and it's not hard, you guys. If you want to spit, spit. If you want to swallow, swallow. But, <laughs> but make that decision before. Like, don't, 
you know, like nobody wants that either. Like, cause then I'm going to feel if I was a person, you know, and you were sucking my cock, I would be like, wow, like, what did I do to you? Like, I just gave you something that was beautiful because all, everything was so pleasurable. It, it brought me to orgasm and ejaculation, but um, yeah, make that decision beforehand and communicate with your partner. Like if there's something that you're not wanting to do, let them know. So that's not something they're expecting. The gag reflex. Can we just say that we have a gag reflex for a reason? Because <laughs> people are like, how do I turn off my gag reflex? We're not trying to turn off our gag reflex. Our gag reflex is literally there to help you not to choke, you know? Because last thing you want to do is just throw food down your throat and then choke and then you're gone, right? So the gag reflex is there to help you out. And it can still be sexy. It really can be. Like, you know, some people get turned on by the fact that you, you know, you're kind of gagging on their cock. So it can be really nice and visually too. Um, but it can be trained. You can train your gag reflex. And I also hate the term, I don't have a gag reflex. Yes, you do. You have a trained gag <laughs> reflex. And that's okay. It's great. It's awesome. I wish, you know, people who really wanted to learn how to deep throw could train theirs just as much as you did. <laughs> but let's not spread the fact that some people don't have gag reflexes. You do. And some people can um, recover quickly where others, you know, you might have to throw up or feel like you're throwing up. And I will give you a tip for those who are really wanting to get to that deep throat. You have to release the, I, the mindset that you don't want to throw up because you might throw up. I'm sure everybody has probably thrown up once or twice, especially if you're, you know, your stomach is full and you've had some drinks, like, you know, it's okay. I'm hoping everybody that's engaging in sex are adults so we can handle these things. <laughs> Shit happens. It, it, it does literally too. Um, if you're already having it in your mind that you're going to gag, you're going to gag. The more you focus on the thing that you don't want to happen, it probably will happen because your focus is on that and not on anything else. Um, I recommend taking a deep breath before diving in. You know, you're cutting off a, a supply, right? When you have something blocked, <laughs> your literal um your throat right because you have something down your throat um so and it doesn't have to be a <gasps> and then you go in it can be a and then you open up your mouth okay um i have a tip in there uh taking a deep breath on the upstroke and exhaling throughout your nose on the downstroke um can help i'm not saying it helps everybody but that's one of my personal tricks and tips so you know, try it out. Let me know. Let me know how that goes. Um, and when you feel like you are about to gag, slow down. Take your time. And you can hold the cock there in your throat right there and let your hands take over to recover and slowly pull out. Like, the biggest thing is that you don't want to freak out. Because you freak out, they freak out, then you're freaking out because you're gagging. <laughs> try different positions. Um, I'm going to show you a few. I know I keep saying in a few, but um, the thing is that you want to get a straight angle down your throat. Car head, unless you're like really over the cock like this, is going to be more pleasurable than you just, you know, laying on your stomach trying to suck the cock and trying to deep throat because you're eventually going to hit the back of your mouth and it's not gonna go down your throat. Or if it does, it's kind of going on a weird angle and they might shift you around anyway to make it more comfortable for them. But you, just so you know, you wanna make a straight line on the cock down your throat. And these have a slight curve. Some curve this way, some curve that way, some are just straight. So you're gonna wanna follow the curve definitely as well. Try sticking out your tongue so it's not blocking the way. Um, now, this is one of those where you might get a little anxious when you're doing it only because you're like, oh, wow, that's a lot. Like a lot of their dick is going down my throat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can kind of make your tongue like a carriage and you can guide them. 
And let me stop, pause. Advocate for yourself. You are not their hand. You are not a, um, a tanga object. You are somebody who is breathing underneath that dick. Do not let them go wild to the point where you're like, I can't keep up. I think they're going to take me out. Okay, so please use your hands, use your voice, stop them if it's too much or anything like that. Just be safe and please advocate for your own pleasure and safety. To continue, <laughs> relax your jaw and open at the back of your throat. So think of it as like um, you're getting ready to yawn as far as like bringing your tongue down to the base of your mouth. So when you're getting ready to yawn, you're like, and your tongue is usually down. So that's kind of how you want to go. Are we allowed? Am I allowed to put my mouth on this? Okay, just making sure, because I know you said YouTube, but I don't want you guys to be X'd out. <laughs> I mean, these days, like, you know, I mean, we'll age restricted. It'll be okay. Okay, great. <laughs> so you want to, yeah, so you're, it's kind of like you're yawning. And you're making that O with your mouth and you're opening up the back of your throat. So that allows for, and because your tongue is relaxed, it's not blocking. And your tongue also helps with your gag reflex because it also is there to, yeah, it helps you to swallow, but it also helps to block things that you don't want going down your throat. So that's why we're relaxing our tongue and moving it down and out the way. Tensing also causes the everywhere on your body even your anus to tense up but definitely the back of your throat to tense up which then nothing is going to go down there or it's just going to be very uncomfortable and we want to be as comfortable as we can so you have your jaw relaxed and you take your time I hit the back of my tonsils, <laughs> but that's what you do. <clears throat> Get some water. All right. <clears throat> so you can also have your partner gently tease and stroke the back of your throat with their cock. And that also can help. That also bring a lot more saliva down. <clears throat> I don't have anything, you guys. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say you have a little, you have a little deep throat cough there. You got a little deep throat, deep throat cough. Deep throat cough. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but yeah, so once they're like um, stroking and kind of teasing the back of your throat, you get this thick kind of. Um, saliva that comes down that also aids in lubrication so when you're watching porn and you're like how do they have all that you know spit and saliva one remember porn is acting <laughs> so there is an aid but when it's like one of those like raw films or if you've ever done it yourself you'll notice that the texture of your saliva has changed and it's because it's, it's you're really stroking and your your mouth and your throat are like okay we got to help them out like they can't do this with a dry mouth so it's really just bringing all that secretion and everything down to really help and guide you to suck cock isn't that beautiful your body is already helping you out you know your own lube um but if you do need lube again like i said in the beginning Use a water-based lube, one that tastes as good. Wicked or Sliquid have <clears throat> the best tasting lube I've had, I've tried out. Wicked has more of your like cinnamon, coffee. They have watermelon too. It's actually really tasty. Candy apple, like they have like kind of like all types of things. Whereas Sliquid has like your candy flavors or like your lemonade. Um, they have blue raspberry. Um, yeah, they have all types of stuff. And they're really, you know, you can just put a little bit on and it helps you. It helps you. It helps you. <laughs> um, you can also train yourself or your gag with a toothbrush. I feel like we've done this as kids, you know, like some way or sticking our finger down our throat. 
I mean, we didn't know we were training our gag reflex, but you know, we we just knew that it there was a react uh, a, a action a reaction that happened. Um, but that's one way. I've had dentists tell me, you know, to stick your thumb in your palm and hold down, and that helps you get through it. Um, yeah, but the biggest thing is to train, train it, practice. Use a dildo if you're, you know, I don't know, maybe you're meeting up for the first time with your corn bay or whatever, and you're like, I'm going in, you know, I'm doing this. And you can train with, if you have a dildo at home, um, you can help train yourself that way or with your toothbrush. Go very slowly at first and increment, incrementally while holding the cock in your throat, relaxing more and more as you continue. Um, We'll get to face fucking soon. Like just, you know, take your time while you're doing it. And depending on the size of their, their cock, you want to take your time anyway. Cause if it's a more girthier or longer cock, you can't just slam down on that. Like <clears throat> you heard like my throat after I just did that. So just imagine. And the lube also helps with the corner of your mouth. Cause there's nothing worse than ripping or splitting that. Cause after that, I don't want to play. I'm done. It hurts. <laughs> it's like a paper cut and I don't want it now. Um, in any position that you are, and you're going to see this, uh, me talking about this, but try stimulating your nipples and breasts and even your genitals because it takes you out of your head and more into your body and feeling pleasure, which then allows you to be able to do some great things. It's like um, training your flexibility, right? So the more you you're focused on something you're breathing so let's take yoga for uh, instance like an example like if you're in your head you are like this sucks this is hard this i need to move out of it i'm thinking of buying groceries or i'm thinking of something else and uh your your yoga instructor is then like okay i need you to breathe and focus and then the more you do that you're like, oh, okay, I can, I, I can do this. Yeah, I, I can do this, you know? And then before you know it, class is over. So yeah, it's like training that in a way. Um, and this also not only turns you on, because who doesn't want to be turned on? Like, who doesn't want to come from orally pleasing somebody? Like, I think that's beautiful. Um, but this also keeps your energy and, of course, the juices flowing. And that's amazing for whatever you got planned after or any other time. <laughs> and you're gonna have to like I said you're gonna have to give up the idea that you might throw up because you might and you're gonna have to learn how to surrender to let go with deep throating and as long as you trust the partner that you have it's easier because if you're not completely there in the trust you're gonna keep it surface level and that's okay too because you trust is earned um but yeah, the more you're able to feel like you surrender and you can fully let go with your partner, the more you'll be able to do. So that helps as well. And practice, 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 and practice. So I have another exercise that you guys can do. I'm gonna try it. Let's see if my gag reflex isn't is cooperating, you know, maybe because I haven't done this in a while. I need a live-in um, partner, clearly. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of self-pleasure. No, I'm not. I will never be tired of self-pleasure, but it will be nice to be able to practice more on somebody with a heartbeat behind it. Behind it. Um, but again, so it's this exercise is really what I did in the begin, uh, the first thing that I did. So you pull the base of your tongue down like you would, like you're about to yawn. Think about making a big round O or entrance at the back of your throat, and then you kind of retract the base of your tongue, okay? Um, when you're doing this, Take your time, again, slowly. If you have your toothbrush, you know, you can try it that way. If you're using a finger to train, you can try it that way. Um, a popsicle is amazing for this as well. And it's a great game that you can play because it's like, don't let a drip fall, okay? So when it starts melting, you catch every bit of it and you'll be amazed. And that is why we have flavored lube. Okay, I think maybe for me. <laughs> so deep throat positions. 
Um, again, you want to make as straight of a line as possible. So you can be on your knees and depending on their height, I wish I had, I should have had like pictures of what these look like. But the biggest thing is when you're on your knees, you want to make a direct line, okay? And that can be them sitting in the, on the couch or something and you're between their legs and you kind of prop up just so that you're not like here trying to, you know, place the penis down your throat, but you have some height for yourself. Um, your partner could be standing and you're sitting on your knees. So, you know, just like at attention and, you know, they can, I said, I, do I say, yeah. So they can also take a step forward. So if they're taller than you, they can take a step and kind of lean in. Hopefully they have some walls or something to hold their, their weight. So, cause please, if you are the receiver, do not bear all your weight on your partner that's already down there on their knees because it's already uncomfortable, okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you how you can make it a little bit more comfortable. I'm not saying it's gonna completely take away, especially if you have, you know, achy knees or anything like that, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you that in a second. But this is really nice because they can be in front of you, they can be behind you, just be uh, mindful that you will have balls in your face if you're okay with that. It's okay, you know, we're adults. We know that they're there. They're fun bags. Um, well, if they like it. But this is, I call the sword swallowing because now that's another direct line down your throat. So let me get some water. which that can then be another pleasurable thing. <laughs> Thank you for the applause. Yes, yes. Um, use your hands for support. I am a lover of Liberator, their wedges, or any of their shapes, really, because they have a heart. They have all types of shapes. They're really nice. They have that really nice foam that you can really, you know, take some pressure off of your knees. Um, and... That has nothing to do with age or anything like that. I was a cheerleader who did co-ed stunting. I ran track. I'm a dancer. I've never stopped being an athlete. My knees, I will probably need to replace them at some point in my life because I've just taken so much on them. Um, but I will definitely use something to help me out to make it um, comfortable. And you can use your own pillows if you have or blankets or anything like that, that you can kind of stack up because Liberator items are on the more pricier side. I think sports sheets might have like inflatable um, shapes. Um, and I'm sure there's some other like generic stuff out there that can work as well. Or yoga, the, the yoga meditation uh, mats, even though some of them have like um, holes in it, so that might be uncomfortable, but whatever feels comfortable on your knees that you're able to do this in a more comfortable, comfortable way, yeah. Oh, taking the cock above while laying on your back. I'm gonna talk about this with the face fucking and throat fucking as well. So this is, I mean, I can't do it just the way my I'm set up right now, but literally let's say you're laying on something like this, your head is slightly off. I don't want it completely off because I don't want you to get any cricks in your necks or anything like that. Um, but just slightly like this so that you can then lay on your back and they can, that's, it's kind of like a power switch right there because you were holding all the power just a while ago. Now your partner is going to be in control of the power. <laughs> um, and Definitely, this is more intense. Again, please remind your partner, you are living and breathing underneath there. Do not while out because this is my throat. This is me. And I don't want to choke, okay? Unless, you know, I'm into that. Um, and this is really nice too because then they have access to your nipples, right? So they can stimulate you um, while you're 
while you're laying on your back and then you can be stimulating your genitals. So then you have a whole other interaction going on and sensation and they're loving the view because they're noticing that you're really enjoying yourself while they're playing with you and then they're stroking and things like that. But again, nice tap on the thighs, let them know, okay, okay, we're done. Um, or slow down or anything like that. And that's something you can communicate with them too. So like safe words. So one slap is a, or smack is a, okay, okay. I hear you. Two is like, we're getting there. And three is stop, just stop. Okay. <laughs> we're done. My throat can't take anymore. I'm, I'm, I can't do it anymore, but, um, and give yourself breaks. Be, um, kind to yourself. Um, this is not a all-star game, okay? This is a the pleasure sport. So again, face fucking, which is a very aggressive form of oral pleasure. <laughs> um, the difference, face fucking doesn't involve like full cock insertion, so it, it's more shallow because it's kind of like they're stroking or you're We've all kind of did it in some type of way when you're speeding up and things uh, like on the cock, you're bobbing up and down. Um, but throw fuckings when they go far, as far as they can, really. And sometimes they can get to the base of the cock. And it looks kind of crazy seeing, you know, your throat take everything because it's a visual thing. And I think that's what gets them off as well. <laughs> um, you can be on your stomach, you can be on your back, you can be on your side, you can be on your knees for uh, face fucking. Um, you, again, you just wanna be comfortable with deep throating your partner's cock already. This isn't something that I'm like, okay, just start off by fucking my throat. No, know your partner's anatomy, <laughs> please. And, or at least be familiar with the feeling of a cock going down your throat. I don't want, I worked in the ER as, um, when I was in college, I wish I could tell you I've seen everything. I haven't. But the things that I have seen, I'm just like, okay, y'all, we got to speak up for ourselves. <laughs> and I'm going to say this story again when it comes to anal, because I've seen a lot of stuff like that in the ER too. <laughs> um, again, I kind of went over this as far as like laying on your back, using the Liberator sex furniture. Um, and they have everything. They have wedges. I have a chase. Um, the double ramp, which is like a bigger uh, uh, wedge than this. And it's, uh, it's higher up. So that gives you another angle to play with. Um, just using the bed if your bed is high enough. Because I know we are all into low profile beds. And I'm complaining because I don't like them. I like my bed stacked up. Um, <laughs> um, the couch, get creative, you know, find different ways to do this. Like definitely tap into your, your sexual energy, which is your creative energy. So definitely play around with that. The throat is a very pleasurable place in the body. Some people can have throat gasms. I love throat gasms. It's a different type of orgasm. It does not feel like a genital orgasm. Um, it's, and I think it's really, not completely, but in a sense, it's almost mind over matter. Like, cause it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm really pleasing my partner and this feels so good. But there's also this scientific backing of this, right? So there's this vagus nerve. Now I'm not going too deep into it. I am, a, so my way of teaching and how I came into this is actually sacred sexuality. Tantra is the foundation of my work. Um, I am also now a student of another, well, the only government accredited school in the world, um, Authentic Tantra, and I'm working to become a practitioner with them. So I'm not gonna go too much in this because the science and the knowledge of the vagus nerve can get deep, all puns intended. Um, but just so we know the basics, basic of, the basis of the vagus nerve, it's a cranial nerve that literally goes from the the base of your brain straight to your perineum and it literally is down and it branches off into other places but it goes to show that we are connected internally more ways than one like 
literally our body is here or a vessel right and a pleasure seeking vessel and the fact that our body is here to give us the experience of pleasure and not just to create life literally but to create other forms of pleasure within with our partners with ourself wherever it is is amazing and the reason why you can't, one of the reasons why you can actually have these throatgasms is because you're stimulating that. You're activating that, that vagus nerve. And it's like, wow, like I'm bringing that signal up to your brain because that was amazing. And I need to bring it back down to your genitals because, oh my God, what was that? And it's just shooting up and down throughout your body. And, and your body is like, oh, this is amazing. I don't like this is crazy. Like this is a whole nother stimulation. So you can definitely look more into it um, as far as the vagus nerve because it's an amazing study, um, uh, especially the polyvagal information. Um, it's so much. It's a lot. And if you continue to follow me, if and when you continue to follow me, you will see more information that I will bring out there when I am able to, when I am finished with that certification because it's amazing what our bodies literally are able to do <laughs> for us. So yeah, stay tuned for that. The taste of cum. Diet does play a huge role in the taste of cum. I'm not, I know we've all heard the song pineapples or we've heard it in some sense or form. That does not mean you go out and eat a whole thing of pineapples. And one, it's not gonna be pleasurable for your tongue if you eat a whole thing of pineapples anyway. I love fruit. I will eat pineapples until my tongue is raw. So I'm not telling you to do that because it's not comfortable. Um, <laughs> but one of the things, and let me say this too. Um, every person has their own distinct flavor. I'm pretty, cum is not going to taste like candy. It's, cum is going to be tasting like cum. I mean, it can be more bitter. It can be funky, but it's cum at the end of the day. It's not candy that left the body <laughs> um so just be mindful of that we're grown we're adults um but some things can enhance the flavor and fruit obviously is a great way to do it but that doesn't mean you drink a bottle of pineapple juice and you're instantly tasting like pineapple that's not how it works um though there are herbs like fenugreek that will make you smell like syrup <laughs> and you might taste a little bit syrupy at the end, but you know, you have to be taking a certain amount for that to happen. And that is something you definitely want to tap into your doctors and see if they're able to do it. And um, yeah, just do your research on that. Just please be careful um, and not get too hung up on come not tasting like it's kind of like genitals smelling like genitals, like they're not supposed mm -hmm. to smell like anything else, but genitals you know <laughs> yeah. not gonna smell like baby powder it's not gonna smell like flowers it's not gonna smell like musk you know the musk that we like to smell in the candles it's not gonna smell like that or taste like that Oops. prostate play or actually before we get the prostate play i want to show you some um toys that i have just for the lingam the cock the phallic so Tanga is my go-to as far as like strokers. That's not to say, I mean, there's other types of strokers out there. Um, I can't think of the names at the moment. That's a brain fart. But they all kind of look like this. I know people have heard of Fleshlight, so that's a stroker. Um, Doc Johnson's have their own, like everybody has some form of stroker. Um, and the thing that I like about Tango is really just their innovation more than anything else because the material is somewhat the same of anybody else's. But this one is a Tango egg. We were having a conversation before you all hopped on of just like, first of all, I thought they were always cute when I worked at the, at a, a at an adult store. Cause you know, we would have them out for Easter and you know, you can make like a pleasure gift basket. And it literally, sorry you guys. It literally comes in a plastic egg. Like, how cute is that? You know, like, hey, babe, I got this egg that is also a stroker. Um, 
Some of them have a texture inside of it. You'll know the sticker that is wrapped around usually has what texture that's in there. So you can literally just ask your partner or you and your partner can go together and be like, oh, do you think that texture would feel good on you? Well, maybe, you know, who knows? You put lube inside. And then I went for more of the stretchier things just because obviously I don't know who the length and girth of anybody's cock who are watching and paying attention. But I went for those that, you know, you can really stretch out. The Tanga egg, if you're more on the lengthy side and girthier side, it really is just gonna be at the tip for the most part. Once you have lube in it, you'll see that it will stretch a little more. Um, and they have their own lube you can put in there. It's literally called whole lotion. It's weird. <laughs> and, but I, again, I'm gonna put a little lube inside of this. Can I can I share a tip that I have with the Tinga eggs? Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually cut a hole in the top of them so that they stretch out and then they become a stroker because because oh. we're gonna tell my information now. Um, I don't deep throat, so I use those so that my partner can have lots of sensation and mm -hmm. I don't have to push my body into something that feels uncomfortable. Yeah. But yeah, snipping a hole in those they work real good nice and the the sensation or the texture of their whole lotion reminds me of fuck water or uh the was it cum something i don't know if they even have it anymore because i feel like they took it off the shelves for a while um yeah fuck water the 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 silkier one yeah and dragon Sorry, you guys, I can't remember. They have their own like cum lube or something like that. That's kind of what the texture is. I was enamored by it. I was just like, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. But it's kind of goopy and sticky. Hey, okay, there we go. And you can see that it stretches and glides and I can totally see what you mean. You can definitely cut a hole at the top and kind of get it longer to really help out with that. And just like Sarah was saying, um, you don't have to deep throat. You don't, you don't. These toys help you out. And like, again, you're not supposed to, I don't know anybody who can just suck dick for an hour, right? There might be somebody out there, but you know, my mouth would be tired. I would have quit. Um, and I feel like the person who's receiving I don't feel like there's enough lubrication for that, but what have you. You get tired, you don't want to, use a tool, use a toy, work smarter, work easier to get what you're wanting. And that way, you know, you can stick to the tip. I don't have an open-ended um, stroker right now, but you can stick to the tip and they can still have the sensation of being inside something while also getting their glands, which is one of their most sensitive parts on their penis. Um, uh stimulated and then can you see that yeah that's how like stringy the lube is Ugh. <laughs> they also have something that you can add like more some uh this is called the orb um and they also have the flip i think yeah the flip that looks similar the orb is literally called the orb because it has orbs inside of it. It has a nice little texture inside that it looks like a, um, a old school like game console. You know, like the balls that ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And this is really nice because you can add more suction. Now, again, this isn't gonna have the cock going deep. As you can tell, it doesn't go really deep with this and this is just a Vic skin. Um, this is a pricier dildo, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> but um, as you can tell, I think average compared to, you know, if you Google average size penises, that this is average. But the average can be different for different people. But um, you can really stroke it and you can hear the air and the suction. And you can tune in with your partner to see how that feels. Again, I wouldn't recommend the orb or the flip 
and it has quite a suction, y'all. <laughs> that was work. That might be very nice for somebody. That kind of turned me on. But um, this is not going to work for somebody on the girthier side, to be honest with you. So if you're wanting something for somebody on the girthier side, they have the Tanga Geo that comes like this. It literally looks like art. I'll show you the whole setup. When you get it, it, it looks like this. <laughs> you take off the top. It has a whole drying stand. So once you're dry and everything like that, you can put it on there or wash it out because everything I showed you can be reused. Um, it shows you the texture of what it will look like in the back, uh, like when you flip it over. And then you just flip it in and inside out so you can get the texture. It doesn't look as, you know, amazing after that, but same thing. And this is really nice for those who are on the girthier side. And it feels really nice in your hand. It's like a stress ball. Like one, <laughs> like one of like the water kind of feels stress ball, but yeah. And then again, soap and water to clean these out after anytime you use it, not even if they come. Please wash your toys every time you use them. Um, even though, well, these aren't silicone, so please wash your toys. Soap and water, dry it inside out they usually come with a stand or something like that so yeah so those are some things that you can use um to help you out with oral stimulation i just want to do a quick time check uh yeah, that it you. is yeah just letting you know <laughs> okay i was getting ready to say what am i on on time <laughs> <laughs> you are at about an hour 15 right now Oh, okay. I took you guys to school today. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go over prostate play just real quickly. So the prostate is about two to three inches in the anus. Um, that can be debatable. Everybody's body is different. Um, you're going to kind of have to just test it out and play with it a little bit to see where it is. Um, it's a gland that surrounds the urethra, which is behind the pubic bone, below the bladder, and above the base of the penis. I had a photo, but for whatever reason, it's not allowing you guys to see it. So I had to kind of break it down <laughs> so you can see, like envision where it is. Um, the prostate is a mass of muscle glands and connective tissue, which is about the size and the shape of a walnut. And the prostate produces ejaculatory fluid that combines with sperm and fluid from the seminal ves vessels to create the ejaculation, okay? Um, just to skim over that. Ooh, something is missing. Um, you can lick and rub around the perineum and the anus in between sucking on their cock to stimulate the prostate. This is external stimulation. Um, and again, I told you the perineum is right between the anus and the balls, underneath the balls. Um, you can use a prostate toy or vibrator to, to stimulate them both externally and internally. So you can literally use um, I'll grab this Wee Vibe. I can't remember the name right now, but there is a link for this. This is literally made for prostate. Um, anything you put up the butt as number one, please make sure it has a base lo uh, large enough so that it doesn't get sucked up inside the body. Again, I worked in the ER. I've seen Barbie doll heads. I've seen light bulbs up somebody's rectum. I've seen so many things and I'm just like, why? Why? But you know what? I'm not here to judge you. I just, I'm going to teach you to be smarter, okay? To make better decisions. Um, <laughs> and even if it's just a butt plug, this, even though this has a flared base, depending on the size of, of the person, this could still get sucked up inside. So you definitely want to look at your own anatomy or your partner's anatomy and buy toys made for your body and your partner's body. So just be careful with that, especially if you're getting excited and they're going back there and they're like, where's the toy? And now you got a whole situation. And if you can't get it out, you're at the ER. Um, if they are open to penetration, some people are not, and that is okay. Um, again, that's why we can stimulate the perineum outside or the prostate externally. But if they are open to internal stimulation, 
take your time. Lube is the all that is the only thing that's gonna help you get through it. I'm telling you right now, the anus will not self-lubricate itself, okay? You need lube, 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 lube. Oil and silicone are best because it keeps the party going. You don't have to keep adding to it. Um, again, like I told you before, just do your research and test out on your own body to see what works for you. Um, to find the G, the, pros, the prostate, I was gonna call it a G spot. I, I guess it could be for some people. Um, you can find the prostate towards the front of their body. So it's just like when you're looking for the G spot or going for the G spot. And it's easier to find when they are turned on. So don't just, you know, lube up and stick a finger inside and trying to find the prostate. One, it's gonna be uncomfortable for them. Um, and two, why? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I also dom, so it depends on if they deserve it or not. <laughs> As they get aroused, the prostate glands will then fill with fluid, swell, and become more prominent, and it's easier for you to find that way. Um, prostate play can enhance genital stimulation, which can also lead to orgasm. And again, like I said, many can have orgasm without ejaculating. If their prostate were removed, it's there's still a phantom prostate there. They they can still have certain stimu stimu stimulation and experiences as somebody who does have their prostate still there. Um, and it's really interesting. I still wanna do the research behind this and some more um, why when it comes to somebody who has had prostate cancer um, or what else we can do to make sure that they're still getting the same stimulation that they were used to beforehand. So stay tuned for that too. And I'm looking to um, collaborate somebody or if you know someone who's done the research and can lead me to them I would love to speak with them because I think it's we I think we should know it we should know about that um oh and to be safe if you are engaging you can use flavored condoms one condoms are probably my favorite flavored condoms that are out there and they have different flavors and they're, I just it, I just think their um, packaging and just their whole company, what they stand for is amazing. So definitely look into them. It's literally one condom. Um, but for analingus, I recommend using a latex uh, or non-latex dental dam. Those come in different flavors and it's just a piece of uh, film. Um, if it's non-latex or if it is latex that you can spread out, it's it's thin and you can literally just do what you got to do um for finger stimulation i love putting on a black latex glove i like snapping it and letting them know it's time to play i won't do it once i have claws though so please be aware of that because ow um and the come hither motion works for the prostate stimulation as well and lube 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 and lube and have fun you guys those are my tips and tricks that I have tonight for you all. Um, prostate toys, again, I said uh, We Vibe has um, this toy. There's a link to it. It vibrates. It has uh, an app. It's app controlled, so you can do it that way. It's nice and curved, so your partner can even rock while you're also giving them some type of stimulation, so they can, they can kind of you know, do some face fucking and things like that and still get some prostate stimulation. And Lalo has a design that's similar that comes with a remote as well. The toys I showed you are on the pricier side, right? Um, but there are other options that are out there that are very similar. Just again, uh, ask questions if you are confused with anything. I'm sure any store owner are, will help you. They have experts on hand for a reason and I'm sure open has people who can give you any um, advice or their own experiences with it. So yeah, yeah. that is what I have. Awesome. Um, I, yeah. I was gonna say, I really loved how you centered uh, autonomy and pleasure. Because I think like one of the things that, that I've kind of noticed as I talk to people about oral is people are like, I want to figure out ways to get it over with quicker. 
And I'm always kind of like, yeah, but if you're, if you're doing something that you feel like you got to get over quicker, you know, it's like, it's like, let's rethink that. Cause, cause that's not the kind of vibe and the kind of energy that you deserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and don't have anybody like, I feel, I keep having to say this, like, you know, like that move where they take your head, like, advocate for yourself stop that I'm not when I'm ready to I will you know <laughs> and um yeah. if you don't like it don't do it you don't yeah. have to do it you really don't because there's nothing worse than feeling like you have to do something yeah I saw uh, Nina Hartley teach a teach a fellatio class at one point and she's you know like Nina Hartley the porn star who's been in the business for like since God was a child um <laughs> and and she, she's, you know, she said like, when I, when I go down on a partner, I say like, I can, I will give you five minutes of the best I can offer. And if you don't have an orgasm, that's cool. We're going to move on to something else. And I really like that attitude of like, you know, like I'm going to give you what's comfortable and pleasurable for me mm-hmm. and then we can move on. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. definitely. And yeah. you know, like I promise you, you're as a relationship coach as well like your partner is not really that attached to it unless they have their own attachments to what um receiving head is supposed to be yeah um and if they really care about and they're enjoying it i promise you i'm not saying they won't miss it because if they really enjoy it they may but there's ways around it which is Mm why i showed you know some some items that you can use but you know don't get hung up on having to run this relay of the best head ever you know Mm -hmm. just make it the most pleasurable head yeah that you guys are having together yep so many great yeah Mm -hmm. i feel like i learned so much um you know and i I, you know, I went in feeling pretty confident about my skills, but I'm like, oh, oh, haven't heard of that. So like, I'm so excited to, to learn so much from you. I hope, sounds like we had a couple of people in the comments who are already saying that they were super excited for this class. Um, okay. well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And be mindful that with any partner, new partner or different partner, you know, it's going to change. So be adaptable and it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Just yeah. enjoy. Have fun. <laughs>